if you load up GTA 5 for the first time ever with the goal to spend the next 100 days of your life playing 8 hours a day, where can you expect to end up? And while you could say it'd be different for everybody, we would all start on day 1 when you load in as a brand new player and just tell yourself, yeah I'll make money later, so you can go explore the city, you run into every clothing store looking at clothes you can't afford, you go to every barber shop looking at hairstyles you want one day, you even open your phone to check out the different businesses, houses, and cars that you can buy one day but have no motivation to actually start grinding. So you close your game, making zero progress on day one, except knowing you have the next 99 days to grind for all of these things that you want. Which brings us to day two. You hop on, still as a level one, with no actual clue of what's going on other than the fact you know you need money. So you look up best ways to make money in GTA 5 online and see hundreds of different videos and think, oh, this is gonna be super easy. Until you realize none of these methods are actually actually possible because you can't just go do the diamond casino heist, you don't have a bunker to make money with, and you definitely don't have the cars to be doing car dupe glitches, so you're forced to do contact missions. We've all been there, these missions suck and only pay out a couple thousand at a time, but you have no choice other than to spend your whole day doing these, making your first $350,000. And spending all day doing missions to make $350,000 is not great, but it does mean you now have some options, like you could upgrade your clothes, you could buy yourself a cheap garage. You could even buy your own car, but you've been doing contact missions for eight hours straight, so you just hop off. And then you wake up on day three and probably think something like this, I really want to save up for some car I don't need, but I guess I'll just be responsible and buy this random cheap garage and a decently cheap car to go with it. Still not bad though. And it's official. You now have your first car in GTA 5. Congratulations. Congratulations. But it doesn't really change the fact there's still not many money methods other than contact missions and maybe double money jobs that you can be grinding. So that's what you do. You spend day four, day five, and day six just doing as many random missions as possible. So by the time you're at day seven, you're officially a millionaire, which is amazing. In just seven days, you went from absolutely nothing to having a million dollars, but it's also kind of a problem. Like, do you just blow all of your money on a new car? No, probably not. Do you buy a business? Well, there's really no businesses a million dollars can get you. Do you just buy a CEO and then go back to contact missions so you can afford to buy a vehicle warehouse? Yeah, that's exactly what you do. Which now means you have your own CEO, but unfortunately you can't really do anything without a special crates warehouse or a vehicle warehouse. So day eight, day nine, day 10, day 11, and day 12 are unfortunately spent doing these missions that you're quickly growing a strong hatred towards, but they did finally make you enough money to buy a vehicle warehouse. And this is where you can start to make a lot of money. So you spend the rest of day 12 sourcing as many different cars as you can. So on day 13, you sell every single one of those cars, each one making up to $100,000, and then it's pretty obvious this is a good money method. I did a video on my channel before where I spent 24 hours just grinding vehicle cargo and made over $3 million, so if you do the math, that's a million dollars every eight hours, and you realize that. So you spend the next five days sourcing and selling as many cars as possible until we arrive at day 18. At this point, you gotta be level 50 with $5 million in your bank, so it's finally time you go to a clothing store and upgrade your outfit it's finally time you go to an ammunition store and get all the weapons and it is definitely time to find a way to make more money specifically heist because you've probably done a bit of research on the best money method and found there's a way to replay heist to essentially actually make unlimited money so you buy an arcade and spend the rest of the day setting up the casino heist that way on day 19 it can be grind day you and a random load into your first ever casino heist and find out other than a couple deaths it's actually pretty simple and in less than an hour you make a stupid amount of money and since you did some research earlier and found out about this replay glitch you know you can just keep doing this heist over and over to the point where at the end of day 19 you're up to seven million dollars and then you spend day 20 and day 21 doing nothing but the diamond casino heist to the point where you turn that seven million into 20 million dollars so in three weeks you went from a level one to at least a level 75 with multiple businesses and 20 million dollars in cash but you still only have a bad garage and just one car, so you finally buy your first nice apartment, you buy a couple million dollar cars, and of course, you buy the Oppressor Mark II, which will unfortunately change the direction of the next 79 days, because once you got the Mark II, you realize you can just ruin people's car meets, blow people up when they're driving, and even ruin player cell missions, and since you've been grinding for three weeks straight, all you do now is troll. <laughs> 
Sensational. Day 22 is spent blowing up new players. Day 23 is spent just non-stop blowing up any person you can possibly find. Day 24 is spent blowing up people while they're driving. Day 25 is spent finding people having car mates, asking to join, and then just ruining it. But luckily on day 26, you realize that you're not having as much fun on the Mark II as you were, so you tell yourself it's time to go back to making money. And your money methods really don't change. You're constantly either just grinding heist or doing vehicle cargo. And every time you get a bit of money, you either buy a new business, you get some new cars, you get more houses you don't really need. And this trend of you playing to make as much money as possible keeps continuing for 24 days, which brings us to day 50. At this point, you already have 400 hours in GTA 5, which is crazy. You've been playing so much that in just 50 days, you own almost everything in the game and honestly just feel like you've done everything, but that's when you make a, a friend. friend. And this is brand new to you. You're not alone for once, and even though they're a bit of a lower level, you guys still do everything together. The rest of day 50 is spent going back to your trolling roots, while day 51 and day 52 are spent doing things like drag racing all of your cars, getting absolutely blasted together and driving around, and most importantly, sitting down and talking about what you want to accomplish in the future. And it starts to just become normal. You get on, meet up with your friend, and mess around every day until on day 60. You load up GTA just as any other day, but when you get on, you realize your friend is nowhere to be found. So you start spamming them just to get no response until eventually hey bro i actually quit gta my bad hope you can find someone else to play with and this is when the depression sets in you spend day 61 all the way through day 68 just loading up to sit in your office and think about what you once had you think about the 50 days straight you spent making as much money as possible and think if it was really worth it you think about all these million dollar cars you have but wonder what's the point of having them if you have no one to share them with and you stay sad for a while but eventually day 69 rolls around and you're feeling better but still don't have the motivation to go make money so instead you use the money you already have to take all of your cars to los santos customs to change the looks of them on day 70 you do the exact same thing with all your planes and helicopters and on day 71 you change up all the interiors in your apartment essentially just starting over on day 72 you try to go back to grinding for money but it's just not the same still though you push through and spend the next couple days just doing heist to the point where you get up to 50 million dollars and having so much money is definitely cool i mean you finally buy the Luxor Deluxe and a couple other things you don't have yet, but the money really doesn't mean that much to you. And to recap real quick, at this point, you're on day 76 with 608 hours in GTA 5 and are probably around level 175 and you already basically beat GTA. So you're just walking around trying to figure out something to do when you see a brand new player. You walk up to them when you realize they're actually a level 1, which is when you instantly think back to when you were a level 1. You think about having to do contact missions, having to hover over shark cards, convincing yourself not to buy them, or just straight up being broke, but you know you can't let that happen to them. Wait. What? I'll help you. Help me with what? The rest of day 76 is spent giving Casino Heist to a level 1, making him an instant millionaire, and it was the best feeling ever. So on day 77, you load into another session, find a low level, and do the exact same thing. On day 78, you again load into a session, find some low level player and change their life and day 79 day 80 day 81 day 82 day 83 day 84 and day 85 are again spent taking noobs and giving them everything they could ever possibly want over these days you've gotten countless messages on how much of an impact you've had on new players and you want to keep helping but you just can't you've been playing gta for 85 days in a row and the past nine of them you haven't done anything for yourself so it's time you change that you spend the next four and a half days trying to recover by doing things like driving around some cars you haven't touched in a minute, pulling up to car meets that don't get blown up by oppressors, and vibing out watching some TV. Just overall very, very chill, which takes you to day 90. At this point, you've played a stupid amount of GTA and are almost done with the challenge, but you honestly don't know how to spend your last 10 days until you realize you never got to be a noob. You see, most players start GTA by robbing stores, stealing NPC cars, and being bullied by higher levels but you really never got that experience because you just went straight into making money so you spend day 90 doing exactly that you rob every store in los santos no NP
NPC is safe because you take all of their cars. And overall, you just have a fun day messing around acting like a noob. On day 91, you find players who left their cars out so you can fill it with sticky bombs and blow it up when they drive away. You wait for players to go in stores so you can ram your car into the doors. And your main goal is to annoy other people, just not with the Mark II this time. Then on days 92 through 99, you do a little bit of everything to relive the best memories from your 100 days. You do casino heist. You drive around all your cars. You try and make friends. You help out new players. You visit your businesses. You fly some planes. You make some cool outfits. You really just do it all because you know tomorrow is gonna be the last day. Speaking of last day, today is day 100 and you really don't have any other goals than to play 8 hours one last time. During the past 100 days, you've put in 800 hours to GTA 5, you're at least level 200 and you have everything you could possibly want. In just over 3 months, you literally beat GTA 5 and obviously it was a grind playing 8 hours a day but you didn't buy any shark cards and you did everything legit. So yes, next time Reddit tells you GTA 5 is hard, just know you can pretty much beat the game in 100 days.